Hello and welcome. My name is Papa Sean. This is Baldur's Gate 3, and we are currently standing at the Adamantian Forge. Alright, if you hit the map, this will be the location of it in relation to the rest of the Underdark. Alright, hopefully that helps you find it. And once you're here, you're going to have a few interaction pieces. You're going to have the Crucible, which you can left-click on the Crucible. And it says no, no control in a story point yet. It's going to open up and it's going to have insert an item. When you left click on that box, it's going to open up your inventory. Now you noticed I moved it out to the right and that's because it can get hidden behind. And so if you're, if you're not able to see it, you are not able to use it. So you want to make sure you move that out of the way. You click on the little box, get into your inventory, and you want to grab yourself a piece of mithril ore. All right, so you stick that mithril ore in there and it could be any other ore that uh, it says it's ready to be fed into the forge. We can probably utilize it. But we're going to go ahead and insert this mithril. And now it's going to be in. Once it's in, it's in. All right, there's no exit for the uh, the ore that goes in. So be sure that you have the right one that you want in there. And then we're going to go ahead and go into the mold chamber. Molds, you can change which mold you want to utilize. That's what that ejection lever is for. It'll spit it out and it'll lay on that little uh, rectangle that's down there. Similarly, we're going to click on that little box and we're going to find ourselves a mold that we want to use. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab this shield mold. We'll drag it over and click insert. All right, now that that's locked in, again, you can hit the eject mold. It'll pop out of that rectangle. Or if you're ready to move on to the next part, you come over to the lever on this side. And this is kind of like the elevator lever. So when we yank this, it's going to bring us down to the next section. Okay, some things to note is that on the side you have a platform control button and then you also have a lava valve. So at this point what you want to do is position your party members probably here, hit the on group uh, let's go ahead and ungroup them and we'll send over one of our allies. Now this kind of gets into spoiler territory. We're going to pull that valve and lava is going to come out to, to uh, go ahead and handle the situation here with the uh, mithril ore and get that forged out. However, and this is where the spoiler comes in, so if you need to pause it, go ahead and do that. Remember when I mentioned having your party fully uh, healed and ready to go? This will be quite a challenging battle coming up. Alright, so you see the terrain has changed. It's good that we were standing on that and out of the group for the uh, party where they're rolling all around. We are facing off against Grim now. In order to move forward with our <laughs> uh, crafting of that shield, we're going to have to handle Grim. Uh, if we right click and we examine Grim, it'll give us some details. You'll see that he is resistant to slashing, piercing. He is going to be vulnerable to bludgeoning, so that means bust out your war hammers. He also is going to have acid resistance, thunder resistance, and then immunity to necro, fire, lightning, psychic, poison, and radiant. So uh, you also have some cold resistance. So that means he's going to take half damage for all of the attacks that you can do except for bludgeoning where he's going to take double damage. It's pretty cool. So with that, you'll notice that this only applies when Grim has that superheated if you hover over it kind of sticks to the under his name superheated and it lasts for two rounds when he's in the lava he's going to be superheated allowing him to be vulnerable to those types of damage especially bludgeoning when he is no longer superheated after those two turns that he's not in lava he's going to be like fully immune so what you need to do then is again crank the, uh, the lava valve to let the lava out and hopefully he you have positioned him where he is standing in it <clears throat> So this is where it's important to have a tank that is able to keep him in the lava. He's going to chase after whoever attacked him last. Your turn order is all at the same time, so you can go ahead and, and uh, manipulate who has the last hit on him in order to keep the aggro and keep him where you want him. 
But uh, periodically the lava is going to dissipate. As you can see, the uh, chamber is closed, so no further lava is coming out. So you'll have to crank that open, get them melting again, and you'll be able to make it through the battle pretty much okay. My name is Papa Sean. Thanks for coming along. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Till next time, happy questing.